Nick. Nick is from Indiana. He's here with his girlfriend. And Nick is a cast member here at Walt Disney World. We don't have employees, we have cast members, because it's all a show, we love that. So, what is your question? Alright, well, um, we are from Fort Wayne, Indiana, and uh, on August 8th, um, we did hear the news about how your bus sank out in the accident after you had a show at Parkview Field. Um, and I have been praying for that situation, and uh, how has God brought glory to that situation and how has your band personally, how have you guys been dealing with that situation as a band? Well, um, and for those of you who don't know, um, we had, there was a bus accident we played in, uh, in Fort Wayne um, and then after the show we were leaving town and a young lady uh, apparently kind of looked like she was turning right and decided to cut across the whole like about eight lanes, I guess, and and basically hit the bus head on, and the two, uh, all three people in the car were killed, and the driver was uh, nine months pregnant, so she lost the baby as well, and um, and it's it was uh, it, uh, we were in shock that night. It happened about one in the morning, and we were there until uh, probably about five or five thirty at the at the, uh, the accident, and uh, and uh, just. Uh, just in shock, you know, we, we, we didn't know what to say, what to think, what to feel. Uh, fortunately, we had some very um, godly officers in Fort Wayne that that uh, really, they were just angels. They, they showed up and really kind of helped us through all this. And um, we uh, the hardest part of that whole thing was because we were involved in the accident, um, on the legal side, we weren't allowed to reach out to the families until it all got kind of figured out. And, uh, and and so that was the most difficult thing for us is that we had to kind of keep, we had to remain quiet. You know, I think we were allowed to send flowers to the funeral and that was about it at the time. And we were seeing all this stuff on the news and the, and the web went through. And being a minister or a follower of Christ in general, it's devastating not to be able to reach out to them. And I understand why we weren't, you know, and the police officer was like, man, it just may not be your role to do that in this situation right now. And so all we really could do was, like, we, we started Twittering and got on Facebook and said, just pray for the families. We don't know what else to do. And what the crazy part about the whole thing was, um, and this is where God showed up for us, I think, for the families, is people all over the world started praying for these families. And, uh, and the response we got on Twitter and everything else, like, the day after the accident, it was like the number one most Googled thing, like second, like it was us or this accident, like Michael Jackson, the day it happened. And, um, and all people all over the place were praying for these families. Didn't, we couldn't say any names, didn't, we couldn't say anything, just praying for the families. Some of the families were, um, were um, um, I guess, poverty stricken. They, were, they weren't very well off is what they would say. And I think the thing that broke my heart ministered to me in a big way was when we finally were able to reach out to one of the families, we spoke with the, uh, the mom of the girl that was driving, and and she said, you know, nothing's really gone our way in our life, and she goes, and she said, and all of a sudden, people all over the world have been praying for my daughter, and she goes, I figured we'd just go away and no one would ever know it, and all of a sudden, she became this really proud mom that even though her daughter was lost her life in this accident, that people knew who she was in Brazil and all over the place. They may not know her name, but they were praying for her. And uh, it blew our mind because we felt like we weren't doing anything, that we were just sitting there with our hands tied. And all of a sudden, God showed up in a huge way where these families are being ministered to without us putting forth any effort at all, which is it's God. You know, that's usually the way it is. And, um, and so we were just like, man, you know, we thought it was weird. We had to be in control. We thought we had to try to fix something, and God was moving the whole time. And, um, and the really contact we've had, our, our road pastors have been able to have contact with them. We've had contact with them through the officers that have stayed in touch with us, the chaplains, and um, and they've just they've been nothing but grateful about the prayers. You know, they're they've been really you know they're they're heartbroken that it happened. You know, she wasn't on any substance or whatever. We don't know what happened or why she decided to turn at the last minute. But, um, but all we've been able to keep doing and that we actually do is to keep praying for these families. We don't know if they know Christ or not. We know one family does for sure, but we don't know about the others. 
And that, you know, like I said to Kirsten, it's like, you know, we believe that God's going to show up in a big way in his glory, even in the most horrific accident like this. But we don't know how it's going to happen or if it's happening because we just can't have much contact. So, so that's been the hardest part. And we've, we've, we've been informed through like Twitter and Facebook. We've had contact with like the girl's um, boyfriend and people like that that have reached out for help. And we've tried to contact local churches to because, you know, we, there's only so much we can do. So we've gotten in touch with local church, stuff like that. But it's been kind of at a distance for several different reasons. And, and so we just keep praying. And, um, you know, and I, I really do hope that our paths will cross at some point. And I think they will. But, uh, you know, there's just a time. We don't want to take any chances of interrupting the grieving process. And so they're just, I think they're just going through healing right now. And I think hopefully they will come and we get to see each other. But, uh, but yeah, it was devastating, I mean, to say the least. I, you know, it's not like that, ever. Thank you very much, Nick. We have Tara down front here from Virginia. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for your support for the military. My husband's not for military, and uh, we really appreciate it. I really love the dedication of the salute that you did at your concert a few minutes ago. We missed the first night because we were down at Paris Island watching my best friend's son graduate from the Marine Corps boot camp yesterday. So we just want to thank you for your support. It really means a lot to us, senior support for us. Um, but the question I have, bring, on, bring the rain. Um, a couple years ago, I've been through a lot of the trials that Nicole was talking about, and um, my heart goes out to her. And But that song, for the Heaven Does My Rain Time, has come to me a lot to me as I continue to go through some of these trials, especially medically. What was your inspiration behind that song? Um, it was in 2004. We had a lot of, it was a really long year. Like, we, uh, for my family personally, we talk about life before 04 and life after 04. And um, it, uh, that whole year, we had several people pass away that was very close to us. My brother-in-law was, uh, he was 19, was January 4th of 04, after he left our house, wanting help to get his life straightened out, left our house to go home, and, and, and fell asleep with the whip, and was killed that night. And then uh, just several things, my son was diagnosed with diabetes that year at age of two. Um, our little girl was six weeks premature, and it was kind of touch and go for a while. Uh, just crazy stuff, like it just never would let up. And, um, and Bring the Rain was, uh, it really, it, some people misunderstood and thought Bring the Rain was me saying bring it on like I can handle it. And it's, it's completely the opposite. It's more a reminder that, man, there's got to be some kind of purpose in this because it, it's not letting up. There's got to be a reason for this because, like I said before, God doesn't make mistakes. And so the whole idea was, you know, it, obviously God is not, it, it, he's not distancing himself from me. And so it's obviously me. And, um, and so I think that there are seasons in our lives to where things take place that, Lord willing, will, will draw us closer to Him. And the scary thing is, is that, man, what if we actually start praying that way and say, God, if everything brings you glory, and I know there's going to be painful times in my life, if that's what is going to bring me closer to you, then let it rain. That's just a, I mean, and when we sang in the studio, our producer was like, are you sure you want to say that? Like, what if locusts show up or something? <laughs> So there's like, and I'm like, well, I don't worship a superstitious, I'm not a superstitious person, I don't worship a superstitious God, and, and it's not like that, it's not, you know, it's not like, I'm going to say it and all these bad things are going to happen, it's just me saying, this is what I have to be, this is the person that God wants me to be, is that no matter how bad my body aches, no matter what happens to my son, what happens to my brother-in-law, that I, the thing I, 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 I thirst for more, most is Christ. And I'm not saying that's me all the time. It's not. It's certainly not. But that's what I keep. This, this song is just to remind myself that's, that's where I'm supposed to be. And so yeah, that's where it came from. Well, this is our last question. It's from Jason, who is from Inverness, Florida. Uh, well, I got a little shorter that goes along with it. But I lost my brother in 2002 to a drunk driver. And just the other night, I I was going on your MySpace and checking it out, and I heard homesick. And I was wondering what inspired you to write that, and what are your emotions as you're singing that song? What what's like inspires you the most about that song? Well, that song was written for my brother-in-law's funeral that was killed in the car accident, and um, and um, it was never meant to go on the record. And it was actually my in-laws, his parents, that convinced us to put it on the album and thought other people should hear it, and so. Um, and so we put it on the record, and we, I remember going on tour, and, uh, literally right after the funeral, we started performing the song. And it was so, 
emotional. It was just too soon that we've never sang it since. We did that one tour and just was like, you know, the two things I don't want to happen. One is I don't want it to be too soon to where it just seems like I'm trying to, you know, sell CDs off this song. And the other thing is I don't want it to become so simple to sing and like it's no big deal because what happened means more to me than just being able to sing a song every night. And so, and so we just stopped singing it. We'll sing it again someday, but you know, it's just a kind of hit too close to home. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, guys, just want to say thank you for spending some time with us tonight. And just thank you for being so transparent, you know, allowing God to use you to give us such great songs for inspiration and hope. And you just see how important these songs are to so many people. So thank you so much. Thank you.